In this session, we're going to have a look at how sliders work. In particular, we're going to look at how we can read values from the sliders and also the attributes around them. Towards the end of the tutorial, we're also going to look at how we can create what's called a vertical slider bar. So we can actually have it running in a vertical position rather than its default horizontal position. So let's get underway. I'm going to start a new project. I'm using version 11.1, .1, so it's a good idea to use that version or above to be able to do this tutorial. Once again, when it opens, single app view, click on next, put in the details of the project. I'm just going to put slider bar in there, the name of the project, the information. Uh, language is Swift, so we're using that rather than Objective-C, and also we are using the storyboard version, which is the UI kit rather than Swift UI. So be aware that I'm using UI kit coding. This is completely different to Swift UI. I'm going to keep these ticked at the moment and click on Next. It's going to ask where to save it. I'm just saving it in a folder on my desktop with some other default programs that are in there. Now when it opens, if you don't have some information up here and it's asking you to fix it, just click on Cancel. It's not going to affect the project in the tutorial phase that we're in right now. So once you've done that, we can then click on Main Storyboard. This will give us a blank project. Then we want to set up our testing area. So I'm going to change this to an iPhone 8. As I've explained in previous tutorials, the iPhone 8 has a smaller pixel map, which makes it easier to test on and doesn't require as many resources as using the iPhone XR, etc. I'm also going to select the iPhone 8 out of this list here as well, even though you can't see it, it just goes outside the recording area. But you notice that now my View controller has turned to an iPhone 8 size. So let's start by moving this into the top left hand corner of my screen. So what we want to do now is add some objects to our view controller. So to do that, I'm going to click on the plus sign. This brings up all the different objects we can use. We're going to need a label on there because I want to see the value of the slider bar. So I'm just going to put a label on. I'm just going to find center and leave it there. The next thing I'm going to add is our slider. I'm just going to drag that out and put that right in the center of our screen. There we go. So the next thing I do on the slider is I'm going to add some auto constraints. So I'm just going to go add missing constraints. This will lock it into place. You also notice our constraints have now been created. And I'm going to do the same thing for the label as well. It's a little bit quicker than doing it manually. So now that's done, we can test this application by clicking play. This opens up our simulator and this gives us our first milestone where I've got my label and I've also got my slider on screen that's working. So I've accomplished my first milestone. The next thing I want to do is actually start some coding. So I'm just going to stretch the window out a little bit to the right hand side. If I want to change the properties of this, I can do so through the attributes panel here. I want to bring up the assistant. So I'm just going to click on the the left hand alignment bar up here and click assistant. If you're using Xcode 11, you'll have that up in the top right hand corner. Otherwise you'll be working with the little Venn diagram in some cases. So let's get underway. The first thing I need to do is do my outlets. So just underneath the class here, because all this class forms one big function in a way. So I'm just gonna put a developer comment in here and just call it outlets. So in this section here, I'm going to have outlets and then underneath this, I want to have my functions. So this is where my functions will be. So to design outlets, all I've got to do is just click on this here, hold down control, click and drag across and then let it go. It'll ask to create an outlet. I want to give it a name. I'm going to call this LBL for label and then I'm going to go slider value display. So we know exactly what this outlet is for and go connect. So I've made a connection between this and this here. I'm just going to turn off my right hand window so I've got a full code align there. The next thing I want to bring across is my slider outlet. Now I can either select it here on the stage or I can select it from the list up here. Sometimes it's quicker to pick it from the control source or the view control source than it is to actually select it on stage. Hold down control, click, drag across, let it go. It, once again an outlet we're going to call this one SLD for slider and we're going to have we need to give the slider a purpose so let's put number of students and click on connect and I'm just going to remove the line blank line between the two so you can actually see I've now created two outlets for the objects that are on stage the next thing I want to do is write a function for this so I'm just going to bring this up a little 
the functions go in this area here below the first function. This is the view did load. So in other words, it compiles a program and it opens up the simulator and fires the application up. And if it does load, it runs this function here. We're going to create a new function underneath for the slider. So this outlet here allows us to get values from the slider. But what we want to pick up is if someone moves the handle. So that requires a sort of an action. So this is like an event trigger or an action an action capture function. So I click and drag that down here into this area here. Notice it's after this function close brace and before the close class brace here. Now we know we have an action. You do have outlet in there as well, but we don't want that. It's for the view controller and we can give it a name. Now it's best to have a different name. So this one's called slider number of students and I can actually call this one SLD and if I want I can go bar number of students. So this is the slider bar number of student and I'm just going to make that connection. You notice that it's made a little function for us with the sender and anything. So anything that changes on here gets sent here and we can then capture that value. So let's have a look at how we can capture that value. So I'm just going to close the left hand side to give me more work area and coding area. So what we want to do is pick up the value of this slider. To do that we need to use a line of code. We need to talk to the slider number of students. So SLD number of students and in particular we want the value. So we want to know from the outlet what number this is sitting on. So what this slider is sitting on. But we need to do something with that number. We want to display it in this label here. So and that's called LBL slider value display. So let's make LBL slider value display dot text equal to the slider number of students value. Now the problem we have at the moment, it would sell us we can't assign a float to a string. Because when we get information from a slider, it's coming through as a float. So we need to convert that to string. So what we do is use string. So we're using a string method to convert the float back to a string. So take this value that is a float, convert it to a string, which is text, into the text part of this label display. So let's have a look at this working. Now you notice that it's got label here still. That's because nothing's moved yet. Once we move this bar, click on it or anything to this bar, it will then pick up the value and move that. So I'm just going to click on it and you notice it's gone to 0.5. I can slide it up to 1 and all the way back down. You notice it's getting these little decimal pointed numbers here. So let's have a look at that a little closer. Because it's a float, I'm going to click on the slider bar once more. And I'm also going to bring up the attributes panel. In the attributes panel, you will see that it's got 0.5. This is the starting position of the slider handle. So if I wanted to, I could start that at one and it'll go to the right, or I could start that at zero and it will move to the left. Now the reason for that is this minimum value at the moment is zero. So let's start our minimum value at one and go all the way to 100. So this slider value now has one through to 100. Notice that the slider head is at one. If I change that to 50, it should put that in the middle of the slider now. If I want it at 20, it will move to the bottom quartile. There we go. So let's just leave it at 50 at the moment where it's nice and neat. The other problem we have is that the slider itself is fairly small. So let's just stretch this out a little bit and you'll notice we get some more guidelines that can help us and we also get some different constraints showing us there's a change in this. So I always click on the reset suggested constraints. So this way it adjusts all our constraints and it will sit correctly on our screen. So now we start at 1 and go all the way to 100 with the slider starting at 50 in the middle. Let's just check that. Once again, because nothing's touched, it starts to label. As we move it, we can now see it. We've hit milestone 2 now where we can actually adjust the slider with more details from 1 to 100. So the next thing we need to do is turn this to an integer because at the moment it's a float. To see that, I'm just going to stretch out the label a little bit. 
and also reset its constraints. And when this tests, you can see that we've got a decimal point and answer. But the big problem is we can't have 0.8 of a student. So let's fix that by rounding and turning this value into an integer. So before we turn it into a string, let's round the number. So we can easily round by using the round function and that will round the value of this slider value. It will round the value given to us from the slider. But if we wanted to have it as an integer, a whole number, we can always int the rounded number and this will convert the decimal point and answer and round that and then convert it to a whole number. So, and the int actually turns it into an integer, which is a different data type. And then once again, we turn it into a string, which is the text type. So we're actually taking a float, turning it to an integer, turning it to a string, so we can place it in a text box on the screen. So let's have a look at this now. As we move the slider bar, we don't get half a student anymore. So you can see the concatenation of instructions help us refine the display to the output that is required. Now the last thing we might want to do is actually have this display as a vertical bar rather than horizontal bar. So let's do that. This is going to occur in the function did load. So if the screen does load, in other words the program opens and there's no errors, once it opens we can then adjust the screen. So what we want to change is actually slider number of students. So once we've selected the outlet slider number of students, we want to transform its position. In particular, what do we want to transform? We're going to be transforming what's called the CGAF find transform. Now this also has some properties. We can actually look at its rotation and we're going to have in particular look at its rotation angle and the CGF or the CG float. Now with the CG float, we're also going to be looking at pi. So we're going to be using pi as our angle. So we're basically working in radians and pi is a full circle. Now to adjust pi, what we need to do, to get it 90 degrees, we need to divide it by two. So this might be beyond people's mathematics at the moment. Just, just remember that if you divide pi by two, you'll get 90. So in this case here, oh, it's going to insert G float, even though it's there, it's giving us an error. So I'm just going to substitute that for this. And now it's okay, even though it was there as part of the original. So what we're doing is taking pi, dividing by two, which is 90, and we're rotating the angle by 90 and transforming the slider number of students. So let's just run this now. So I'm just gonna hit play. Now you'll notice on the load, the very first thing we see is the slider has been changed. So as I move it now, you notice it's at the top, we slide it down. Now that can be quite awkward because normally you start at the bottom and go up. So let's just change this around a little bit so it goes the other way. To do that, we're just gonna divide it by negative two. So it rotates at 90 degrees the other way. So the handle goes down rather than to the top from 90 degrees. We're still gonna select the slider here. And we're still gonna start at one. If you've got it set to 50, we probably want the slider to start at one and go to 100. So let's run the program again. Now on the load, you can see that the slider has appeared and it's at the bottom. As the handle goes past, you can see the stacking order where the handle goes behind the number, but you can adjust the GUI. So in this tutorial, we've had a look at how we can get values from a slider. We've looked at its orientation. We've played with a little bit about the starting handle part and the minimum value and the maximum value. There are other things you can do as well. You can change the minimum object. So on the minimum part, we could have this object here. And on the maximum, we can have the opposite of that which is this object here. So when it builds the program now, you can see in the design part some cosmetics changes and you see those little cosmetic changes here as well. So there's a few more things to learn about sliders.
But this tutorial has given you enough information to be able to use them effectively in your projects. I hope you found it useful. If you did, give it a like, subscribe to my channel, and also have a look around my YouTube channel for other useful Xcode UI kit based programs.